if Christ is so important, I'd be f- why is it that he never said one mumbling word about him? Never called him out at all. But here the creator, I'm going to show you where he lays accolades and accolades and accolades upon this man called Israel. Who are our people? Notice who the creator says Israel is. He says in the book of Zechariah, the second chapter, notice what the Most High says about Israel. And then you tell me who's the most important to the Most High, Israel or Christ, who he never spoke of at all. We find in the book of Zechariah, the second chapter, the eighth verse, that it reads, For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, after the glory have he sent me. In other words, he calls Israel his glory. And he tells the prophet Jeremiah, after the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoil you. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Right here, Zechariah tells the nations that Yahweh sent me to search out his glory. After the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. He calls Israel the glory and the apple of his eye. Now, what did he say about Christ? Was he ever called the apple of his eye? Never. And then he continues in the book of Ezekiel, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to start in the 45th chapter of Isaiah while we were talking about the anointed one called Cyrus. Notice what the Most High says about Israel in this same chapter in the book of Zechariah, the 45th chapter. And then we're going to start reading the 15th verse. Verily thou art an Elohim that hidest thyself. O Elohim of Israel. Not Elohim of J.C., but Elohim of Israel, the Savior. There is only one Savior, and Yahweh said that is him. And I want you people that stuck in, in, in Texas, that in, in, in Aberdeen, Texas, by this, this man that claims he knows the law, for you to realize that the, what the Most High says. Realize the the words of the Most High. He says, Thou art Elohim of Israel, thy Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They, they shall sh- go to confusion they together. They shall go to confusion together. That are makers of idols. And all you people that got this idol, this this hippie on the wall, the creator said, y'all will go into confusion co- together. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with her everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Read that again to our people. They shall be ashamed. And also confounded all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. World without end. So the creator says the one that he promised everlasting life, the one that he promised would be his world without end, is Israel. Not the Christ of the New Testament, but Israel. The one that Yahweh said he was going to raise from the grave in three days is not the Christ of the New Testament, but again, the one that the Mosiah said he was going to raise from the grave in three days is Israel. Let's go to the book of Hosea. Let's go to the sixth chapter of Hosea, and let's read the first two verses. Come, 
And let us return unto Yahweh. Let us return not to Christ, but unto Yahweh. For he hath torn. He's the only one that has afflicted us. He is torn. And he will heal us. He is the one that will heal us. He hath smitten. He has smitten. And he will bind us up. And he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. After two days will he revive us. And in the third day he will raise us up. And we will live in his sight. So the one that the Almighty said he would raise up in three days is Israel. And we also go to the book of Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. Because we see that all of these alkalies were never laid on anyone other than his servant, Israel. We're going to have you read the 19th verse. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. He said the portion of Jacob is not like any other nation. For he is the former of all things. He is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Here we are his apple of his eye, his firstborn son, his rod of his inheritance, his world without end. And notice what he says about us in Isaiah, the 45th chapter again. Let's go right back to that 45th chapter of Isaiah, because he lays accolades and accolades upon Israel. And this is the same Israel that the world hates, the same Israel that the world is against. And notice what the Most High says in Isaiah, the 45th chapter, the fourth verse. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. For who? Jacob, my servant. So his servant is Jacob. Nowhere does he name J.C. as his servant. Israel is his servant, and Israel is his elect. Read that again. So the elect that he was speaking about when we started our program is Israel. For Jacob's my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. Israel, Israel is my elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I'm the one that gave you the name of Israel. I didn't name J.C. That's a Greek name. I would never give one of my servants the name of a Greek. I'm the God of the Hebrews. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if I give someone a name, it will be a name out of the language that I've spoken myself, out of the Hebrew tongue. And that's not the one you call J-E-S-U-S. Nor is this Yahshua mentioned. But he said, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. I have surnamed thee. Though thou hast not known me. Thou, thou hast not known me. So the one that created named is Israel. He gave us his surname Israel. And also, if we have time, we're going to look and see what else the Almighty says about Israel. He says in the book of Psalms 24. Let's go to the book of Psalms 24 and see if we can even imagine the Creator speaking even more loving and more kindly to anyone than He had done Israel. And you wonder and say to yourself, Is Christ this important? Why didn't He say one thing about Him? Here He's calling Israel everything, my firstborn son whom the New Testament teaches is Christ, they can't call him firstborn son because there's too many verses that the Almighty has already said, Israel is my firstborn son. So they're going to make up a new name for him and call him the only begotten son. Well, then, well, if he's the only begotten son, the Creator said, I begot Israel. And how can he be the only begotten son when we already got a son here first called Israel? And the king that he called his Firstborn son 
is David.